So I uh, cut bale hay in southern Oklahoma, and uh, it's winter time, so I'm working on equipment. I've got a, a Gator XUV that I bought. I bought this one new a couple of years ago. I had a one before that that I used around here on the farm quite a bit, and uh, it's got a 16 horsepower v2 briggs engine in it and which works very reliably uh only problem is it's really noisy i got a pig problem right now I can't i can't sneak up on those things from a mile away in that that gator so i've been studying on how to convert it over to electric at the same time i had a uh one of those search ads out on craigslist for uh you know john deere that i normally do and i ran across this one which had a motor that had run out of oil. It's practically brand new. I think it had 60 hours on it. This is an RSX850i. Now, <clears throat> this particular Gator came with a 62 horsepower V2 Italian made engine. You think that's a, it's a, it's a lot for a Gator and 50 horsepower, it's crazy. <laughs> and, or excuse me, 62 horsepower, 50 miles an hour. For this gator over here, 16 horsepower, I think it peaks at 25 or 28, but normally around here, you wouldn't want to be in it going that fast. <laughs> so I got it home and uh, they had actually never put any oil back in it. So <laughs> I managed to get it started and it had uh, um, some loose rods, et cetera. And so anyway, I, I didn't really want the engine anyway, but I wouldn't know more about it. But, <clears throat> It uh, pulled the engine, and studying it, it has a transmission, what you're seeing on this side, and this is the V2 overhead cam, dry sump, fuel injected, Italian 62 horsepower motor, which uh, I, some guys online hate these things. Some says they don't last very long, but whatever. You know, this one came with a leak from the factory and the owner apparently didn't check the oil and it ran out of oil and burned up at about 60 hours. Now the drive system on this Gator, it has the, the standard centrifugal clutch by team, that's very common. I think Polaris uses pretty much the same thing. So you got a drive clutch and a driven clutch. And uh, which I, by the way, I've got that for sale. <laughs> You, anybody wants like a nearly brand new clutch for their gator and uh, the engine mounts you know parallel with the transmission so my, my first thought if I put an electric motor in this I would have to mount it like right here with a, a different type of belt drive system the uh, odd thing about this one is also too it has four-wheel drive drive shaft that comes out of the front of it and goes to the uh, front differential and that always turns so if uh, in order to engage the drive the four-wheel drive you hit an electric button on the dash and it turns the clutch on on the uh, in the front differential uh, on the back it had a short adapter housing about six inches long and then I looked in there and there was a spline adapter so the differential and the transmission output shaft both had the same 20 spline adapter. So at that point I thought, well, maybe the easiest thing would be to do would be just to hook an electric motor up directly to it. So I, I took the differential down and we measured the gear ratio and it's, uh, I think 3.8, looking around online because some guy said maybe these things were 3.81 to 1. And we took the transmission, spun it around. It looks like it's about a 3 to 1 gear reduction ratio. So what we're going to do, we decided to do, is mount an electric motor just on the differential right here and do a chain drive and just do away with the four-wheel drive. On most of these John Deere Gators, the rear differential is locked. There's, it's actually not a true differential. So you still have two wheels all the time turning. About the only time I've ever used four wheel drive on my Gators is when 
I'm going like caddy corner across a creek or something and I, I get one of the drive wheels up off the ground. But uh, <clears throat> reality is it's not very often anything like that happens. For battery space, oh my gosh, look into the seats. <laughs> I've still left all the wiring and things in here too. I haven't decided how much of that I want to take out yet, but there's plenty of room to store batteries. I bought a battery uh, kit online and assembled it a couple of years ago. A 48 volt lithium polymer made up of uh, used old battery backups from prank a cell tower or something. And my son-in-law brought his 48 volt golf cart up. We put the battery pack on it and I successfully ran it up and down the road several times, put it three or four miles on it. And it's only like a one point six kilowatt hour battery pack. And I've got that one and one more that I'm building right now that I'm gonna put in this thing. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> the brackets and whatnot, I've already completed and I'm gonna put them on the gator and then come back and show a little more in a minute. Okay, here we are. So uh, that's my proposed motor mount. I've uh, bolted it to the front of the differential, you can see here. And to make sure I got it straight, because these bolts are not, they're not actually uh, horizontal, I uh, <coughs> bolted, I made this piece, bolted it to the front of the differential, then I spot welded it to the cross member. Then I pulled the cross member out and drilled these holes. And uh, so it would be per perfect. And then I, I cut the spot wells off. And the reason I wanted that bolted on was just in case I ever had to pull that differential. I want everything out of the way as possible. On these end mounts, I've uh, <clears throat> made some brackets, hadn't welded them down yet. I think um, the tubing's hollow. I'm not sure I'm gonna weld that. I may use some z -zerts or something like that. And, you know, I may spot weld it just to be safe, but it's something I can ground out later. And I've got a hole in there to get to, to the uh, differential filler plug. <clears throat> on the, uh, right here is the adapter, 20 spline adapter that mounts the transmission to the differential. So <clears throat> when we determine our sprocket size, and I'm working with the guys at HP EVs to do that. Well, um, this will probably be probably a, maybe eight or nine inch sprocket. And I'll take this down to the machine shop and have the sprocket board out to fit this hub. We'll put a pin, put a hole in it that'll fit this. We'll slide that on there, weld the sprocket to it. And then I've got this motor mount C-Face motor mount I got on eBay, $130, bargain, <laughs> 3 8 inch steel, which this also is 3 8 inch steel, which I had in the scrap pile out back. So we'll put the motor here and small sprocket and the big sprocket down here and the rest is just mounting up the batteries and electronics. Should be pretty straightforward. That piece of steel is really big and really heavy. And uh, I painted it yellow just so you, you could see it in there, but it's uh, just something I had. I don't know if I'd maybe use something that big if I was gonna start from scratch. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, one thing I didn't mention earlier, we've had a couple of electric cars and we're on a Model, Model X right now. And, you know, just being able to pull that car in the garage at night and plug it into the wall, let it charge. We're mostly solar, so we let it start charge around 10 o'clock in the morning, but never having to go to a gas station, so convenient. When you're working on a farm, <clears throat> you've got all these uh, diesel powered, all the diesel powered equipment around, having these gasoline engine vehicles is you know, not convenient because you've got to lug gasoline back and forth to town. So I'm really looking forward to having this little guy. And uh, then later converting this one also where they can just be total electric and They'll be sitting over in a shop, plugged in at night, and I just have to go out and get in it and not have to worry about the gas. Anyway, as soon as I get the motors and stuff, I'll post another video. Later.